First thing you need to know about this video is that it is uh, focusing on the problems of the Philippine science education. Um, I will be creating, or yeah, perhaps next time, uh, another video that uh, tackles the man. What are the uh, What are the good things that are happening in the Philippine science education system so far? Right, so again, I hope that is clear. We are going to tackle the problems that are surrounding the science classroom. So yeah, let's begin. So the first uh, problem is the shortage of qualified science teachers. In the country, we may have so many teachers, but uh, still the number of science teachers is uh, known to be still insufficient. Um, in 2004, Garcia and Tan prepared a report on Project RISE, which is R-I-S-E. Uh, it means Rescue Initiatives in Science Education. So the report um, describes the qualified, sci qualified science teacher who, number one, uh, those who have specialization in any science discipline, such as biology, chemistry, physics, and general science in their undergraduate degrees. So I am a graduate of uh, general science, Ooh, so I am qualified. Next qualification is that uh, it's uh, those who have undergone in-service training programs in the varied science disciplines equivalent to one major or minor. So I'm also qualified to that. And then the last one is those with degrees in science-related professions, uh, say for instance, engineering, pharmacy, nutrition, being a nutritionist, anong course nun? and then uh, nursing who opted to go to teaching at the basic education level, took 18 units of foundation education subjects, and passed the licensure examination for teachers, or LET. Uh, that, is, uh, being, that is administered by the Professional Regulation Commission. Now, despite these broad categories, qualified science teachers are still lacking in the country based on several reasons. The first one is that the uh, Bachelor of Elementary Education or BE Ed curriculum did not require students to specialize in any subject area. Ang tawag nga sa kanalayata is gen ed, general education. In my previous university, we call them generalist. Ayan. So, yeah, that's true. They did not uh, have any field, any, any major. Okay, okay. so they don't have an area of specialization. They are general uh, generalists. Okay. Now, as of 2003, CMO number 9 required BE ed students to take only 6 to 9 units of science courses. In 2005, the new teacher education curriculum was introduced, CMO number 30, and the courses for BE ed totals 57 units, but only 12 units of these are in science. Ayan. On the other hand, uh, students enrolled in the Bachelor of uh, Secondary Education or BS Ed program are required to have a major and or a minor in any of the following science subjects. So, say for instance, general science, biology, uh, chemistry, physics, or mathematics. In this new curriculum, students take 60 units of science subjects. However, uh, not many teacher education institutions in the country offer specializations in science, uh, according to a report by Ched in 2006. And the number of students majoring in science education is so small. Uh, in my time, we were uh, one of the few, uh, no, I mean, uh, one of the uh, don't, majors na pinakakonti. Uh, we graduated uh, 13 lang yata kami. In my, ba in my batch, uh, ang BS Ed, it only had 13 graduates. Ayun. So, based on personal communications uh, uh, with deans of colleges of education of state universities in this report, the number of students enrolled in science education is still remaining very low. Okay, so... Uh, the second reason is that instead of specializing specializing in science education, many science teachers tend to specialize in administration and supervision or research and evaluation. A DOSTSEI um, study in 2002 revealed that many classroom teachers would rather be promoted as school administrators 
Ironically, the rate of principals and master, te master teachers are within the same salary range. But, you know, they're still vying for those managerial roles. And final, finally, for this, uh, for the first reason, which is a shortage of qualified science teachers, um, the dwindling number of qualified science teachers is worsened by the brain drain phenomenon. Uh, yeah, that is still a, that is always a problem when it comes to you know uh, economic progress. Yeah, in in the Philippines, brain drain. Um, in a report by Cortes, Tan, and Sevillanos in that since 1990, more than 12,000 science and mathematics teachers left the Philippines to seek better opportunities in the United States, Canada, or uh, even other countries. Uh, Filipinos with master's and doctoral degrees in science and mathematics education are in demand overseas. Now, industrialized countries have been aggressive and persistent in recruiting highly qualified Filipino science and mathematics teachers. So the market is still up and um, the uh, supply that we are producing in the country is low even for its own usage. Um, yeah, that, that's just going to result to a problem like this. So I hope that for the first uh, problem, we all understood uh, this constraint, this uh, problem in science education. We have a shortage of qualified science teachers. Okay, so the first reason is... What um, is the first reason? What is the first reason? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Right, so instead of... His, no, it's not that. The enrollment is very low, okay? And the enrollment for for uh, pre-service uh, teaching, science teaching is very low. The second one is uh, instead of specializi specializing in science education, many teachers tend to specialize in administration supervision. And the last reason uh, that has contributed to this is uh, the dwindling number of qualified science teachers because of brain drain. Ayan. So, uh, the next uh, reason is incongruent teaching. Um, by saying incongru incongruent teaching, yeah, we're, ta we're talking about assignments. So, uh, incongruent teaching assignments with teachers' educational background. This uh, problem is actually the, a result. Uh, actually, it is... Parang tawag dito? It only came to be because of the first uh, problem, yung yung uh, lack of qualified science teachers and that lack kasi that that lack of uh, qualified science teachers in many schools led to the practice of assigning teachers to teach science subjects despite their limited background um you know uh, it's a common uh, it's a common uh, tawag doon it's a common occurrence that uh, an English teacher is going to be given a science uh, load and then uh, other teachers are going to take science because of, you know, uh, a variety of reasons. Pwedeng uh, biglang nagkaroon ng ano, ng... Pwedeng yung science teacher na dapat magtuturo uh, did not, like, you know, come to the school. I don't know, banabuntis or what, or uh, umalis, or I don't know. Reasons for, I don't know, for absence. But, pero, yeah, this also is occurring. Um, the teach A teacher who is teaching science is not really, you know, a science major, you know. And that's a problem. Now, this situation is true for both elementary and secondary schools. Uh, UP Nismed uh, Studies, National Institute of Science and Mathematics Education in the University of the Philippines, studied the profile of participants in their training programs through the years and found out that many teachers handling science subjects are non-science majors. Now, when asked uh, what topics do they find difficult to teach or students have difficulty understanding the concepts, they included electricity, chemical changes, and reactions, um, even weather, play tectonics, and the movement of heavenly bodies. Um, if you listen, if you followed well, those topics, they required a lot of visualization and they use models because uh, the concepts are quite abstract or they are abstract. Now, lacking in confidence to teach these science subjects, teachers tend to focus or linger on topics they are familiar with, usually biological, and leave out the difficult ones. Okay, so I hope, I think I kind of like uh, struck a nerve right there. 
Yeah, siguro meron sa mga teachers ninyo or mga naging or mga tayo teachers mismo, aminado tayo na baka merong part ng science even actually for us who are majoring in science na nahihirapan tayo and thus if animbawa the curriculum guide is asking us to teach it at this particular level uh, we find it quite hard uh, either to simplify or to discuss the complex uh, um, in a complex manner the lesson to our students so you know baka meron nang kasi namang nag-skip diba di naman natin di naman tayo nagtuturo <laughs> okay so Okay, so uh, UP Med reported a, distri- a disturbing situation, a very disturbing situation, when it evaluated the impact of a project called Bridget or Text-to-Teach project, which was implemented in three regions, in Region 4, uh, Region 12, and the National Capital Region in 2004. Uh, yung project na yun was, in- was sponsored by Nokia and the International Youth Foundation through the CMO Innotech project. Uh, through CMO, CMO, CMO Inotech just search it <laughs> alright uh, provided it provided interactive easy to use multimedia packages to make science learning interesting and meaningful for young learners now UP Nismed study revealed that there was no significant certain significant difference between grade 5 and grade 6 students regarding what they know and can do in science that's quite twisted. Okay, so uh, one reason is that uh, that was used to account for this observation is the inadequate preparation of teaching handling teachers handling science subjects. They have an inadequate amount of preparation. Um, grade 6 science has more abstract concepts and higher order thinking skills requirement than grade 5 science. Thus, it can be inferred that teacher's science content background is not enough to deal with abstract concepts in a higher grade science subject. Okay, so if you're ready for the next alarming one, um... There is this result of the analysis of the TIMSS or the, uh... Ano kasing ibig sabihin nito? Um... TIMSS Basta TIMSS <laughs> Okay, so, okay, the most alarming result. Okay, just uh, look, look it up. Okay, I know you're connected to the internet. Just look it up. Okay, Tim's. Okay, most alarming is the result of the analysis of Tim's test given to tests given to teachers of students who took test the test in two thousand three. Alright, so let me rephrase that. Um, alarma, naka alarma yung resulta ng analysis ng Tim's and uh dun sa result, resulta nung test na binigay nila sa mga teachers ng mga estudyante na nag-take nung test nung 2003. Okay, so is it the same test? Let's continue. Now, it was discovered that on the average, the highest scoring students fared better than the teacher. Okay. It was the same test. Okay, so uh, the tests the tests also revealed that many science teachers and students are incapable of ac- assessing items that fall under conceptual understanding and analysis or reasoning, especially items under the constructed response type. The 2003 TIMS test covered concepts in biology, chemistry, physics, earth sciences, environmental science, and the nature of science, while the teachers who took the test were teaching grade 4 science in elementary school and biology in secondary school. So, uh, let us have a review. With incongruent teaching assignments with teachers in uh, educational background, the first point is um, this problem is the uh, result of the pre- previous problem, which is the lack of uh, qualified teachers. Um, they are just assigning or re- as, I mean assigning some non non science major teachers to be science teachers the second point is uh, the uh, tawag don the whopping similarity between the things that a grade 5 and a grade 6 student can do and the third thing is that uh, in a Tim's uh, in Tim's 2003 there were students who fared better than their teachers all right so that is going to be really the problem 
or going to be the case if uh, a non-science major was asked to teach science. The next one, the predominance of teacher-centered classrooms and teaching process, practices. The pre, okay, the predominance of teacher-centered classrooms and teaching practices. Okay, so teaching science through a transmission approach is still predominant. In this approach, the teacher manages the learning and passes on to learners the knowledge and skills, treating them as empty vessels which the teacher fill, fills. There is evidence that transmission approach to learning, especially in elementary school, may be contributing to the lack of interest in science that is now widespread among elementary and secondary school students across the, the country. The low percentage of students venturing into science-related careers in tertiary education can be attributed to the poor quality of science teaching in many Philippine secondary schools. Now, for many years, learner-centered classes have been found effective in developing students' critical and creative thinking skills. The approach is based on the philosophy that students learn best when they hear, see, and manipulate variables, also referred to as interactive learning. Consequently, the method by which learning occurs is oftentimes experiential. For many years, training programs zeroed in on the use of practical work approach or PWA to teaching and learning. This approach requires science teachers to use hands-on and minds-on activities to stimulate students' curiosity and imagination. In a, in a learner-centered classroom, the teacher's role is to facilitate cognitive growth by utilizing the interest and unique needs of students as a guide to meaningful learning. The student's learning is then evaluated based on predetermined and developmentally oriented objectives. Sadly, just very sadly, teacher-centered classes still prevail in many Philippine schools. Lacking in content and pedagogical skills suitable for science teaching, many science teachers turn to lecturing instead of, proving students, of providing students with, you know, engaging and challenging activities that enable the latter to develop creative ideas. It is actually a prevailing problem. Um, the traditional method of just transmitting uh, information to students, uh, we are still having a very hard time moving on from that. Perhaps the problem is... Um, we as uh, I mean uh, teachers of the day, oh, okay, I me, I mean myself included. Um, we were raised in that kind of approach. Um, I am actually one of those uh, kids before who were asked by my teachers to, uh, write really long lectures on my note on my ano, on my notepad, and I don't I didn't really, I before I actually get the idea I have to write for me to be able to process information. But, you know, um, this is not how students are, uh, are right now. I mean, they have unlimited access to information. And if they can read, they can read. If they can write, they can write. It's just that uh, those information. So it's just that it's a matter of... Um, um, siguro, yeah, I'm still learning this skill. It's a matter of how you use that available those available information to your advantage you know um before kasi we are really so used to the traditional methods of memorizing traditional methods of note taking uh, when uh, today they are no longer i don't think they're still applicable because information is just at the fingertips of our kids and they are uh, as we call them uh, technology technology eh? Tech natives, technologically natives, technological natives. I don't know. Now, oftentimes, science teaching is still textbook based. We're guilty of that. And often, concepts are not relevant to daily life or the community. According to many students, science is boring and irrelevant. Small group activities are performed by students, but many teachers do not adequately process the results of these activities. Lesson plans are most often based only on one competency. 
the teaching and learning process or episodes are isolated. The analysis of competency list of DEPED revealed that the group-related competencies can be developed with fewer sessions, allotting time for enrichment activities that develop in-depth understanding of content and acquisition of higher-order thinking skills. Now, assessment of student learning is still predominantly at the factual le knowledge level. That is just quite, you know, I find it so useless, actually. Uh, I mean, I forgive me for, forgive me for that. I actually take it back. Um, it is not useless, but um, it may not be considered as the ultimate goal of the entire process. You did not teach these kids just for them to memorize those terms. So it you're teaching these kids to achieve a particular competency and usually those competencies they're higher or order thinking skills like explaining like designing like creating something out of what they know so i don't think that identifying recalling and remembering is your ultimate goal as a teacher i mean for me it is not my ultimate goal so um the use of open-ended questions is not common. The result of the assessment is not used to improve teaching. Like, after you assess the child, that's it. I mean, it may not be something na siguro always crosses our minds. Pero when we are assessing our students, we are also assessing ourselves. And ako, mostly, I am really not happy with my teaching because of... Uh, the results I'm getting from my students, they are they may sometimes some of them may not get a, a good even a good score, and that is not really going to make me happy. It is it is not um something I would like I like seeing. So you know, I do everything in my power and try to um give them more examples. And if they didn't still didn't work and I. I Siguro, that is the part, the time when I am going to just uh, raise my hand and say, nah, I just have to focus on this kid. Perhaps there is really uh, something I have to do for him, like, uh, individually and no longer involving the class. Yeah. Now, it must be recognized that what gets assessed is what gets learned. And good assessment translates to good teaching. Which trans translates to kasalanan natin. <laughs> Ayan. And then, okay, the next one is uh, quite controversial. Um, we know the value of books, the importance of books in the teaching and learning process. And uh, we also know that uh, as science teachers, there are really some problems in our textbooks, right? Okay. And that makes it uh, the next problem, the next constraint. It's the lack of quality textbooks. Now, in the last few years, con controversies over errors and inaccuracies in many textbooks, including science books, created a lot of noise. Since textbooks may be the only reference materials used by students and teachers, science teaching in Philippine schools remains problematic. Now, misconceptions are being passed on from textbook to teachers and students, making them difficult to unlearn. Alam mo, napakahirap kayang i I mean, napakahirap kayang i-convincehin ng mga bata na uh, kalimutan yung mga unang na-discuss mo na because, simply because something in the book is wrong. At saka the students, they recognize the authority of books. Um, in grade 10, we recognize the the authority of books, and for uh, I mean, in my past the past school year, countless times, siguro ang na ano namin na uh, napansin namin meron siyang grammatical error. The examples are were sold in a way na parang maliyata to ganun. Uh, there are sometimes sometimes na tama yung mga number yung mga digits pero. Mali yung number because of the decimal placement. Ayun, so yeah, there are so there are some some times which are really difficult times to to tell students that you know mali yung book. <laughs> Kasi that is what they we trust. Eh? That is what they trust too. The process of textbook development has changed. In the past, uh, textbooks chapters. And activities were uh, written, tried out, and revised based on feedback from end users. Uh, this process took almost two years before a commercial edition is released. 
The tryout ensures that the language and content are suitable to the cognitive levels of students and errors are detected. Today, textbooks do not undergo trial in schools. Many activities in the student manual or workbook do not work or and some substantial amount of errors have been discovered. Now, in addition, the coverage of the textbooks and teacher guides are beyond what elementary and secondary school students can finish in one year. Because these topics are covered by the achievement tests, teachers often go hurriedly through the chapters. Bahala na, basta importante, na discuss ko. Often, teachers tend to mimic what is written in the textbook instead of explaining the concepts in depth vis-a-vis -vis their applications and connections to real-life situations, which is another problem. All right. Now, the last uh, constraint we are going to talk about is the philosophy that the philosophy of science education at the basic education level is not clearly defined and reflected in the teacher education curriculum. The current science education curriculum for basic education is still described by local and foreign science educators to be overloaded, discipline-based, and more useful for the college-bound. The science curriculum puts emphasis on breadth rather than depth. Science subjects like chemistry and physics are taught with a sense of abstraction and a mathematical emphasis so that many students see them as unnecessarily irrelevant and difficult. This situation contradicts the needs of the large percentage of Filipino students who drop out of school in different grade or year levels, as well as the goal of science education at the elementary and secondary level. That is, to develop science literates and productive members of the society. Over the past few years, several revisions of the basic education curriculum of the Department of Education were completed and implemented. While pilot testing had been done, results of the testing were not communicated to or shared with stakeholders. In addition, pre-service students learn about the basic education curriculum only when they do practice teaching and or when they have been admitted to the teaching force. One of the ano, one of the problems I am seeing right now is that um, kung kailan pa tayo nagkaroon ng uh, Enhanced Basic Education Curriculum where science is discussed spirally. Halimbawa, in grade 7, there's Earth and Space uh, in one quarter, and then you'll find physics in another, chemistry in another one, biology in the next one. You know, a, a, a one, okay, a session of a student, a student, a student is going to have four to five branches of science in only one year the teacher who needs to teach that particular subject science must be capable of teaching so thus that that teacher must know all of those branches right so ganito lang ibig sabihin halimbawa uh, grade 7 yung yung bata in expect siya na matutunan yung lahat ng mga lessons in grade 7 na nagaling sa iba't ibang mga branches of science. Ibig sabihin lang nun dapat, yung magtuturo mismo sa kanya, alam niya lahat yung mga branches na yun. Alam niya i-explain yung mga connections nila if ever man mayroon silang connections. So, ibig sabihin din nun, na yung teacher na yun dapat, general science ang naging major niya. Tama ba? Ang training niya dapat, general science. Tama ba? Now, if you, in, in reality, and also I'm speaking of experience, my license is physical science. My undergraduate degree is in general science. My current masterate uh, is in general, is general science. Pero yung mga sumunod na mga batches namin, they were called physical science na. Um, some universities, uh, such as those that, are sent, that were sending us interns, their majors, biological science, and um, one of my previous interns, interns uh, has uh, has told me, actually he has remarked that uh, one of, I mean, uh, his Waterloo is physics. 
and he is a science teacher and he's expected to teach grade 9 science which is the most complicated physics across all the grade levels. I think one of the uh, one of the new problems that we have right now is uh, one of the biggest problems that we have right now, not new, is the last one. Pre-service teacher training, especially in science, must be general science. That is my stand on it. Um, if they are preparing uh, science teachers that are, that can uh, compete in, uh, you know, the common, I mean, the uh, that can compete both in public, most public, and in most most private schools, they must train science teachers who knows uh, who has a very wide understanding of science, not just uh, biological, these biological sciences or the physical sciences. I stand on general science on this, because unless you do that, it will become a very big problem in the in the you know in the coming years. This is the knowledge catalog. Thank you so much.